And moderator of Face the Nation and CBS News political director John Dickerson, good enough uh, to join us today. And uh, John, quite simply, the Washington Post called this uh, last night a dark turn in presidential politics. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, it was a dark turn. I mean, uh, you know, in response to questions about his character, Donald Trump's character, as revealed on a, on a videotape, he decided to bring up Bill Clinton's character. Uh, and that was sort of where it started, and it went into the basement from there. Um, I think uh, what you know what this suggests is that Donald Trump is going to try to win at all costs, uh, and so for those who want him to win uh, and who see the Clintons as evil, Donald Trump called Hillary Clinton evil, said she had evil in her heart. Uh, the costs aren't that big because the costs are just beating a bad person. For others who are worried in the Republican Party who've been leaving the Trump campaign uh, in the last you know 48 hours, uh, the costs are high, and that's what they're worried about. Both the political costs to uh, senators like Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania, who's in a close election, the costs are high there, and the costs also of what it would be like to have a Trump presidency. So. Uh, the, the challenges to the Republican Party are more acute after this debate, uh, and the rest of the campaign looks like it's going to just only get darker. And so those questions about the party perhaps will continue to be answered today on Capitol Hill, but also the cost with regard to the electorate and perhaps those undecided. In theory, those the two, two candidates in debate are really looking to reach. If there was a certain bit of effectiveness in framing the debate prior to the debate last night with this uh, moment with Bill Clinton's accusers. What did you make of it in terms of an effort to broaden his appeal? There was, that's not going to broaden his appeal. What that does is it gets the Trump voters uh, excited. It creates ferment in Donald Trump's base, mm -hmm. which is different than the Republican base, but ferment in that base freezes a lot of House members who might have been on the fence about whether to leave him because those Trump supporters are in his district, in their district. They are newly energized. They see this as a moral battle between Bill Clinton and, uh, and you know, or against, I should say, Bill Clinton and the media and the rest of it. Um, so it may freeze some of those lawmakers who would feel the heat from Trump supporters in their district. Uh, but in terms of reaching out to college educated voters, reaching out to suburban women, the groups that Donald Trump needed to get, Hillary Clinton only needed to play defense in that debate. Donald Trump needed to continue to try to expand his electorate. There was nothing in the debate that he did to expand that electorate. He was 100% Donald Trump. That's what got him to the dance, and he stuck with it. His hope has to be that the 100% pure Trump followers are big enough to win the general election. There are few people who believe that. There was an apology leavened with suggestions. It was just locker room talk, leavened with promises to defeat ISIS, uh, but this was a joyous reference to sexual assault. Uh, was his dealing with it last night, was that enough? Well, it depends. You know, we aren't the, the, the arbiters of whether it's enough. Um, the, the gleeful um, uh, and enthusiastic description of success uh, being a sexual assaulter and, and, and having uh, relations with women who are married uh, has, was, was what created a lot of people, uh, you know, leaving uh, support for his candidacy. Um, but uh, uh, whether, you know, he did enough last night, there was certainly Mike Pence said he wanted to see Donald Trump to show his heart in the debate. There was, there was none of that. And, and Rudy Giuliani uh, compared him to St. Augustine, uh, uh, who's, who wrote confessions about his life turning away from sin to one of contrition um, and penitent remorsefulness. There was none of that in the debate either. So Donald Trump just made a choice. Um, and so his, his choice and his, his decision is that um, nobody's going to care about uh, what he calls locker room talk. Uh, even, and and uh, that's the bet he made, and he made it pretty clearly. He didn't try and really fudge it. Governor Mike Pence had given Donald Trump really the campaign perhaps a, a night it needed. It, it, he, he had stopped the bleeding previously with his performance at the uh, at, at the vice presidential debate. And then we see last night uh, Donald Trump break ranks with his own running mate. Rather unusual uh, to say the least. Uh, what did you make of that decision? Well, it's more improvisation by Donald Trump, particularly on foreign affairs. Um, uh, Mike Pence says he's okay with it. So um, I think... Uh, I, um, it might have been notable in other times. Uh, it is a um, 
kind of par for the course here, mm -hmm. and uh, probably will the, the the campaign conversation will move on. Uh, certainly on foreign policy, in terms of the policy discussions, that was where Donald Trump was certainly the weakest on policy front. Very quickly, are both candidates waking up this morning thinking they did what they had to do? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Hillary Clinton think, thinks all she had to do was keep Donald Trump from being able to make inroads with those suburban voters, those uh, college-educated voters, um, and then I think Don and Donald Trump thinks uh, you know he needed to re-energize the kind of core energy um, of his campaign, and he did that by in, by being the counterpunching, um, brash, uh, blunt Donald Trump that has that has made him so successful as a Republican candidate. And on to Las Vegas, the two shall go, at least in theory. John Dickerson, That's right. as always, we appreciate it. Thanks, Josh.